Alright, hi guys. Okay, we're back again with another video. Okay, I'm going to be covering on Team 3.2 today. Uh, this is human geography. Okay, we're going to be covering urban re-imaging. Okay, some of you guys have actually requested this uh, this video to actually come out. So, what I've did is I've gone about to consolidate what I already know. Okay, as well as some examples and some content that will be important. Uh, which can come off for both H1 and H2 geography. So, this is a good topic for you guys to make sure you revise. Because why? It has not actually come out before in the new syllabus so this could be one of the, the questions that may come out for the exam which is going to be somewhere this week right so make sure you do stick uh, to the whole video okay understand what urban imaging is because it's actually very very easy all right so before uh, anything let's just jump right in okay what is urban re-imaging so urban re-imaging is very simply changing the facade okay of an image um um um, of a certain urban area, okay, and the way people view it. So essentially, you are changing the perception of a city, right? In Team 3.2, you're always looking at cities. So make sure you know what scale you're looking at. We're not looking at countries anymore, right? We're looking at cities. So if in the case of re-imaging, you're looking at how people view a, a certain city. Do they like the city? Does the city look lively to them or not, right? So usually cities, how they actually derive these perceptions is through direct experiences so be when people actually arrive at the city how do they feel when they step into it and this can be affected by marketing or branding okay so the reasons for urban re-imaging are very simple one of them is competition the other one is investments right what do i mean by competition when you have uh, a city which is not doing as well okay it is definitely facing intense competition right because there are nowadays think about it almost every country has a certain landmark city of its own. So in this case, when you actually use re-imaging, okay, one of the reasons certain countries, certain cities dis decide to use it is in order to help discard this negative imagery which it may have, okay, which can be connected to its history, for, in for instance. For example, you look at cities in India, right? a lot of cities tend to be very slum-like, okay, and this is not something that is good for, for attracting revenue in terms of tourism, all these kind of investments that, that is needed. So in order to be more on a competitive scale, they have no choice but to actually go and re-image themselves in a certain way. Right? Re-imaging also can help engender civic pride, which is very important in today's society, right? Because the world is becoming more united, right? When you actually re-image a city, right, people are going to be proud of that city. And that can increase competition in a lot of sense. Why? Because when people are more passionate and they, they see that, oh, this is actually my city, they will definitely fight to make sure that it, it grows and becomes more prosperous. So another reason could be because of investments, right? Why would a, a, a government want to actually revamp and re-image their city? It is in order to attract foreign investments. This one is a no-brainer, right? You need more FDI, which can boost your economy through economic growth. So in the long term, it can also lead to a more educated workforce with the integration key of foreign companies, which can bring about um, a high level of skills transfer. So now we're going to cover the four main re-imaging strategies. All right, this is where the juice is. Okay, this is what will most likely be coming out for that 20 mark essay question. You need to understand for urban re-imaging how to assess and discuss the different type of re-imaging strategies. Okay, take note that these strategies, you need to really learn how to discuss them by making, making wise use of criteria. Right, which you will notice a lot I have down here in evaluation. So you just need to take note of this evaluative part and that is what should score you that high marks. Okay, First strategy, cultural quarters. Cultural quarters is uh, is simply a way of life. Okay, Don't look at cultural quarters as a re-imaging strategy to increase or enhance the culture that is in the city. No. Okay, cultural quarters basically is the way of life which the city runs. So it is your daily activity. So what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis? So cultural quarters, they aim to attract major arts companies or talent groups. The reason why I say this is because cultural quarters, what it does is to actually help to solidify the culture that a country has, which is basically your day-to-day -day life. Okay, for instance, in Singapore, you have got the Esplanade or the Star, right? Which attracts a lot of foreign talent. Um, I mean, for an artist, for example, Ed Sheeran went to the start to perform, correct? I think it was last year or the year before. So this will enhance the day-to-day -day life of everyday Singaporeans, right? Because when you have something to look forward to, you're like, oh, wow, there's going to be a global star that's coming to Singapore. This 
can also be a re-imaging strategy because now other foreigners will be like, wow, Singapore is actually not that bad. They're attracting such talent, right, which is based on a day-to-day life. So that can help to re-image the city. One issue that you may face, okay, is that in terms of stakeholders, this tends to cater to higher income groups and tourists. So your low income groups may not benefit as much, hence this is a case of inequity. On the other hand, sustainability-wise, there may be an initial high cost. So if the city cannot afford that, they have to learn how to balance that. However, there may be strong long-term revenue which they can reap instead. So there are benefits and there are cons as well. Okay, the next strategy will be 24-hour cities. As the name already suggests, 24-hour cities, 24 hours, basically means that the city is going to run for 24 hours. Okay, so what this strategy aims to do is to extend the use of the city such that more people can enjoy it. So very simply put, this entire strategy is to allow the uh, city attractions to run in the day and in the night. Hence, a nightlife. So you notice Singapore and New York, these are examples of uh, of cities with a very, very strong nightlife. Okay, but with this nightlife will require certain things that the government needs to implement. For example, they'll have to relax the licensing laws. So licensing laws are basically for companies. It is what governs the companies. Um, as well as greater public transport provision. Okay, because people need to get home after they party all night, that kind of things. But what you notice that this is a good strategy because why? A lot of people love the nightlife, right? People don't party in the day. Who are not parties in the day? Everyone parties at night. So this can improve job opportunities as well as generate greater revenue in terms of tourism, in terms of even um, on a daily basis, your friends, all that kind of things. The only negative part it may bring is that it can uh, bring about greater noise pollution, which can be quite a concern to people who are staying around, which is why you notice that in the case of Singapore, they tend to situate a lot of these activities to, let's say, town or either that um, Clark Key, so that people... Um, um, who are living in the HDB areas, they won't be affected as much. Okay, also just take note, there may be a higher cost of operation at night. But if a city can even take this into consideration, they must be doing quite well. Alright, the third strategy you have is heritage tourism. This is where the culture part comes into play. Okay, heritage tourism f- basically banks on renovating and reconstructing past urban landscapes and making them unique to the country. So essentially, it's taking the previous traditions, the previous cultures, the previous heritage, and making them stand out even more in the country. For example, uh, Singapore, you have got Chinatown. Liverpool, you have got this Albert Dock area, whereby it has already been coined as a World Heritage Site and features a Beatles um, story exhibition because I think they all started there and that kind of things. But this is all basically a heritage that has been used by the country to re-image itself such that it shines forth as being unique to the country. So, as stated in evaluation, it boosts tourism through focusing on unique heritage. Hence, you notice that this is actually a good strategy in terms of preserving cultural heritage. So, you can actually preserve culture. So, like uh, Singapore is a lot of Chinatown, the shop houses, right? Those can also be considered as heritage tourism. Okay, the only issue is that it may affect the original facade or landscape. Okay, and this could be an issue because why too many people visit, right? When too many people visit, the landscape undoubtedly would have to be affected. This one is no choice. Lah. Okay, the last strategy you have is flagship projects. Flagship projects, as the name suggests, flagship. Okay, it is something very, very booming, right? It is a project that everyone recognizes. So these are very, very simply large scale. Business, uh, large scale projects key which capture the eye instantly. So they are extremely spectacular and extremely modern. So Singapore, an example that all of us know is, is even become like basically our own flagship and our icon would be your Marina Bay Sands. In the London Docklands, it will be the Canada Tower. You take a look at what that is in the next slide. Okay, the benefits of this is that you have got huge economic gains. Okay, because for example, MBS, you have got hotel revenue, you have got shopping malls, okay, that's bringing the revenue as well. And it creates an identity, a landmark which everyone in the whole world will know and recognize you for. Okay, the only issue is that it has a high cost of constructions and has the potential to become a white elephant. So I think there are some stadiums overseas in Brazil or, or Rio de Janeiro or something like that, whereby a lot of these stadiums were built with the idea of being a flagship project but because no one uses it anymore okay, because for example Olympics they take turns right then as a result it becomes a white elephant instead 
Okay, so this is the Canada Towers. Very nice, right? It's so tall. Wow. Marina Bay Sands also very, very nice. Superb. Okay. Alright, so lastly, this the part of the syllabus that you need to know. K would be your impacts of urban re-imaging. So I've already covered most of this in the past few parts under your evaluation. But just to touch base, K, when I put all these question marks over here, uh, you see I have a lot of all these question marks. K, basically they are all points. La. The only reason I put question marks is just to hopefully spark your thinking somehow. Okay, If not, they are all points as well. So for instance, stakeholders, the lower income, inequity, I've already stated it. Noise pollution, also a case for stakeholders. Urban dwellers may need to relocate. Why? In order to build certain par- certain flagship projects or certain heritage um, tourism destinations. Okay, and a good thing about it is that there could be more employment opportunities with increased foreign direct investments. Sustainability rise. Are they actually sustainable in the long run? Can they be sustained? Are they reaping a higher cost than benefit? Okay, some of them may not also be environmentally sustainable. Okay, especially with the whole idea of climate change you you also studied it right so that's also important okay but it can also be a greater sense of civic pride okay and the last one would be in the short run maybe there are more pressing needs for example a lot of countries they have a high level of poverty maybe they should focus on that first before re-imaging so these are the main impacts of urban re-imaging so coming on to your exam requirements it's actually very very simple what do you need to know explain the reasons number one this one I won't go through Next is to able to explain and discuss the four strategies. So you have to learn each one of the four strategies and give concrete examples. So I want you to take it very simply. Okay, all these examples just use from your head. Okay, just think, okay, what is a very nice flagship project that I've seen before? Oh, maybe it's uh, Singapore and Marina Bay Sands. Oh, what is a nice heritage tourism that I've seen? Let me think. Oh, China, there's the Great Wall of China. So these are basically examples that you can think of from your head and just quote it inside your essay. Make it simple for yourself. Okay, next one is to understand the impacts of urban imaging I've gone through as well. So all in all, this part of this entire uh, syllabus, this urban imaging part, it's actually very, very simple if you think about it. All you need to do is to use criteria to your advantage to write a good essay. So criteria is like what I've actually just written in your impacts. It is using your sustainability stakeholders, time horizon, costs. Okay, these are all criteria that you can use to basically act as your yardstick. So once you have all these yardsticks, right, each paragraph should revolve around it so if i'm looking at flagship okay am i looking at equity again if i'm looking at heritage tourism maybe i'm looking at equity again so they should all have a certain criteria which can benchmark um such that your argument will stand corrected at the end of the day that is what examiners want to see they want to see you with a strong argument but you have to use criteria so long-term short-term gains uh is it maybe you can acknowledge that yeah maybe short-term may be high cost but long-term all these re-imaging projects would be more beneficial then that would be a good argument that the examiner would see that, okay, so you are acknowledging both sides, that yes, short-term is not as good, but long-term, it can actually outweigh any possible short-term cost. That is what the examiner wants to see, so make sure you do it in that way. Alright, so if not, that's all I have for this video, okay? Urban imaging, very simple. Go and study it. Could come out, could not come out. I have no idea. Okay, uh, just try your best. If not, the next video I will have, I should upload as soon as possible, hopefully tomorrow before the paper. Okay, it will be my the last five final things, okay, that you need to do before you actually step into the examination. Alright, so if not, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, as well as a comment if you have any. Um, I'll be sure to answer your questions, so do leave it down below, okay? If not, you can check out the rest of the videos. I will leave it somewhere at the bottom, the playlist as well. Um, And if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.